Hey everybody, uh, in today's video I'm going to give you an overview of LabVIEW and really some hints and techniques to help you learn LabVIEW faster and to make it more intuitive for you. I suggest that you watch uh, my short video before you watch the National Instruments uh, tutorial videos and I'll give you some shortcuts and, and some things to really focus on while you're learning LabVIEW. And so let's get started. So when you open LabVIEW, and I've already opened LabVIEW and started a project, you get two kind of options, create project and open existing. I've developed an application in the past, so this is slightly different than what you're going to see. But click on the create project, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and take a quick overview of some of the things that are here. So LabVIEW is an environment that's often used for measurement and automation. So there are a lot of different templates that you can load up. And that's what the idea here is for a project, is to open up a template that you will uh, kind of accelerate your development and then you can make modifications to that template and you're off and going. So here's a, a real-time data acquisition example. There, there are data acquisition drivers from National Instruments called NIDAC-MX and it works with hardware so you can collect measurement data from sensors and bring that into LabVIEW and analyze it. Um, all kinds of different, here's one for instrument drivers. There, there are Every instrument has a serial or something called a GPIB, General Purpose Inter Interface, a board, uh, GPIB, Gener General Purpose Interface to the instrument, and then you can control that instrument from LabVIEW if you have the right hardware uh, that's added to your system. So a lot of different options here. Let me just start out and teaching you about how to use LabVIEW with a blank VI as if you were starting something from scratch. Now here's really kind of the unique thing about LabVIEW is that you get really two windows when you start up LabVIEW. On the, on the left here, side here I have what's called the front panel and on the right side is the diagram. And LabVIEW is, is unique in that you use graphical programming and it is so easy, it's a snap to create a user interface. So one of the things I'm just going to tell you is when you don't know what to do in LabVIEW, right mouse click. So I'm going to right mouse click and it brings up all these different types of controls and indicators. And to show you the functionality, kind of the simplest functionality, I'm going to start out with a Boolean, and we've talked about Booleans many times in class, and I'm going to select a vertical toggle switch. And its default is, is this size, but you can come in and you can adjust the size and then make it any size that you want, and then to operate, it's just point and click. Now when I made that Boolean control, in the diagram, a control input appeared. And to make this easier for you to see, I'm going to use a function called tile left, and this just shows both the left side and the right side of the code. And let me arrange this so it may be a little bit easier to see in the video. So here's my, my Boolean control, and then here in the diagram, it passes the value from the user interface into my programming environment called the diagram. And what I want to do as a first step is just show you how you could control um, the output to an indicator, and this is an indicator, it's an LED. Let me grab this and make it a little bit larger. That's the off state, and that's the on state. Now, when I place the, the default setting for an LED is a, an indicator, and the default state for a toggle switch is a control. So you can see the difference between these different Booleans in that uh, the control is darker, and then the um, Boolean indicator is a lighter version of that. So if I want to program in LabVIEW, I can take the output from the Boolean control to the, to the Boolean indicator through this wire. And I just right-clicked, I right-clicked on the object, got the wiring tool, and then, and then programmed or directed that control information to the output, which is my Boolean 2. So let's run this program real quick, and if I just run it one time, the one execution button, it runs one time and stops. So that's the true state, false state. Now if I want to put this into a continuous run moment, I can say run, now it's running over and over again. I can say stop, and it'll stop, and then I could have to hit the stop button up here because there was no uh, run completion. So. Um, Let's do something a little bit more advanced. Let's go ahead and use a programming construct. So I'm going to go into the programming environment, the diagram, and I'm going to select programming structures. And notice there's a for loop, while loop, case structure. You can use case structures to do an if statement and so forth. So let's do a while statement. And a while statement in LabVIEW is, is a window. It's a, it's, you think of it as like a lasso, and it runs over and over again. And the code that we put inside of the window 
will execute over and over again on each iteration. And here's uh, a, a Boolean, not a Boolean, but an integer. And integers are blue. And so this is the loop iter iteration. So if I want to control how long this runs, I can take my toggle button. And this, if we hover above this, this is a loop condition. And, uh, and then wire that to the loop condition. And then notice I can right click on this and now it says stop if true. Well, I want to continue in tr if true and stop if false. So I switch the condition to that. So now if we took our indicator in here and then I programmed, directed the data flow to go to the LED as well as the stop button, as long as this button is true, that's going to be green. And then if I go to false, it stops and the while loop stops. So you can see how you can quickly develop user interface. You can uh, control data and data flow within your program. Let's do something just a little bit more advanced. I'm going to go ahead and say, let's, let's take off the Boolean indicator and let's use uh, a graph or a strip chart. And what I'd like to do is take a waveform chart, put that onto the, di to, to the front panel, and then create a random number. And for each random number, I'll put that to the waveform chart. And to do that in LabVIEW, I go up under the programming, right click in the diagram, and then go into the numeric values. I can search my numeric values, and there is a random number generator. Put that into the while loop window, and then I could just pass the output from the random number generator, 0 to 1, to the chart. So as long as my Boolean switch is true, I will continue to run this. And let's just go ahead and say create indicator to show how many iterations that I'm going to go through for that loop while the while loop is true. So go to true, run, run the loop here, hit stop, and wow, we went through a lot of iterations in a very short period of time. It's uh, nearly 7 million. So um, let's add a few more things here to show how that we can, we can control uh, data flow and how to program in LabVIEW. I would like to add to my front panel a, let's call it a vertical, let's use a vertical pointer slider. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control the slider and then I'm going to multiply the zero to zero to one random number generator by the value that's on my slider. To do that, arrange the slider within the while loop window, right click, and then what I want now is I want to, to be able to multiply, so select the multiply function. And it automatically wired that, since I hovered close to the waveform chart, just automatically wired it. Now notice when I hover over this particular multiply function is that it gives an X and a Y input. And it, the, the terminal there uh, blinks at me and I could take the X to the slider and the Y to the random number generator. And now every time I run the loop, it will output, oh, multiply the slider value times the zero to one. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we can make that number, oh, and then also I can change my chart, it's auto scaling. So once again, I'm gonna right click here, turn off the auto scaling, and then let's go ahead and change that to, to be a maximum value of 20. Something like that. Go back and run our program. We gotta to remember to go back to the true state. And so now when I add, a multiplier of 10, we can see that our random numbers generator is ranging from 0 to 10. So let's stop that and notice how many numeric iterations that we went through. Let's do something simpler, simple, and let's add another function, a timing function, inside of this loop. So I went to the timing functions by right-clicking in the diagram, and now I'm going to select wait milliseconds, and then I can actually just by right-clicking on the input of that particular function, say create a constant. So this is how you create a constant. And notice that the, the wire is blue, so it's an integer. And what we want to do is let's wait 100 milliseconds. So every 0.1 seconds, this it will iterate in the loop and then wait. And then wait and then iterate, wait and iterate over and over again. So it'll slow down the speed of the loop and we can see each value as it comes onto the strip chart. So there we go. So now I'm going to change this, come down, and we can see how that changes the, the strip chart output. So a few high-level things to take away. Really easy to create a user interface. 
Uh, anytime you don't know what to do, you can right click. I'm right clicking on the front panel and it gives me all the controls and options. So you can see that you have all kinds of things you can do here. String paths, graphs, uh, tables, different types of layouts, and then you can right click on, in the diagram and you get all of the standard type of functions. There's array operations, uh, we've covered the Boolean operations, there's comparators, uh, string operations, which we've worked with, user interface dialogues, um, and then with the power, a lot of the power to LabVIEW is it has these built-in functions that have very reliable driver, hardware driver, to be able to collect data f for measurements and to automate uh, motion control, has machine vision, has all these different add-ons that you could use. So uh, the intent of this was to give you a real quick overview of LabVIEW, introduce you to quickly uh, some of the key things that you should know to get around in the environment. So until next time, thanks.